So when I was a young fella, my daddy wanted to build a, a barn, a pretty big one, and uh, he said he needed a pickup truck to do it with, and I didn't have a car, uh, or maybe I did, I don't know, but maybe I didn't. Maybe I had a car, it wasn't much. Anyway, he says, I'll buy, I'll buy you a pickup truck and you help me build the barn. I was like, okay, Dad, I'm all for that. Well, he went down to my uncle's house and he had an old 53 Chevy, one of those five-window cab trucks, but it was a three-quarter ton, had the big eight-lug wheels on it. You know, I was a kid and I was in hot rod, in, in hot rod, I was in high school. I didn't want no three-quarter ton Chevy truck with a six-cylinder in it, you know. Now, as I look back, the five-window cab and all, it might have been really cool, but... We, we we ran across one for sale. Actually, he pointed it out to me. Someone had a 51 Ford truck. It was maroon red, had big fat chrome reverse wheels on the back with spoke, with spoke hubcaps on the front, had cheetah slicks on it, had a 430 cubic inch Lincoln engine in it, tied to that big old granny gear transmission. And uh, I said, ooh, daddy, I want that one. He says, well, that one costs more than the other one. I said, yeah, but I want it. So. About that time, he went on strike at, up at the factory he worked for. They went on strike, and he wasn't getting a paycheck. And, and so we kind of put everything on hold, but during all that time, I kept watching that ad. In fact, somewhere around here on this property, there's a there's a, a, an ad from the newspaper where I found that truck. I carried that ad in my wallet for years and years and years and years. I got a picture of that truck I'll show you from high school. Got a couple pictures of it. I drew a big picture of it. Anyway, we wound up buying it, had a tan owl cover on the back, had a, kind of an off green interior, had a big tachometer on the dash. Man, that was sweet. So, uh, I got in a race with the T-Bird, and T-Bird is, is geared to go really fast. You might know that. Uh, they, they, and uh, that truck, actually, during the course of owning that truck, we had swapped the rear end out of that truck for a uh, 55 Ford station wagon rear end, which also would have been geared real high. So I was out on the interstate one time, and this T-Bird passed me, and I passed him, and, and he passed me, and I passed him, and then before you knew it, we was racing. Well, the, I was coming up on the exit ramp where the interstate ended, and I had that thing wound up. That thing had run 160 miles an hour. A lot of people don't believe me, but the guy I sold that truck to, he verified it because he got a speeding ticket. He got caught and caught on radar after I sold that truck to him running 160 in it. Now, if you know anything about a 51 Ford pickup, and if you don't, look it up on Google. Take a look at what they look like. They are aerodynamically shaped somewhat like a pumpkin. So if you can imagine a pumpkin that weighs, uh, you know, like two and a half tons going down the road at 160 miles an hour with an old-fashioned straight axle with about mm, uh, not quite a half a turn of play in it, with a high school boy behind the wheel, you can just imagine I was all over the road in that thing. But I beat him. I passed him. I got back inside him. I went up the ramp. I was on them brakes, you know, because we didn't have power brakes back then. Anyway, I won the race, but during winning the race, I noticed the motor kind of didn't quite sound right. And after a while, I decided, well, maybe I ought to rebuild this motor. So I did. I, out next to the barn, after we got the barn finished, I, uh, I tore it down. I just crawled up under the front end of it, popped the oil pan off, which you could do back in because there wasn't nothing under the oil pan, but the, uh, you know, the old-fashioned straight axle. So I popped the oil pan off. Uh, I took out the pistons, put new rings in it, put new inserts in it, had the head shaved up at the local auto parts store. You could get that done back then and put it all back together. Uh, and it ran it ran good. It ran fine. You know, we was good with it. Uh, at, and at a certain point, I sold that truck. I wound up getting buying a, a 60, a 62 Corvette, and I sold the truck to Mark Garrison. He's the guy I used to go to school with down there. I sold it to him. Uh, in fact, I saw him at a class reunion, and he told me you know, again. He verified that yeah, he got caught doing 160 in that truck. But after I sold it to him, at a certain point, he told me that I had put one of the bearings in wrong. And he said, uh, he, he said I did, and I said I didn't, and he said I did, and I said I didn't, and we kind of argued because apparently I don't know he had, I don't know what had happened. He might have had to tear it down and fix it, but he claimed I maybe put one of the one of the one of the rod bearings in backwards, or I may have wound up with the 
both the rod bearings on the same side of the. I, I don't know what it was, and, and I, I, I don't, I'm still not sure I believe him. However, however, and this is the part where I confess my sins. I show the honesty to the YouTube world of myself, but I'll also confess my dumbness. And I'm just going to say up front, I know I got ADD, that's attention deficit disorder, which means that I can't focus on nothing for very long. And I got dyslexia, which is like if I read a sentence and there's more than three sentences in it, if I, or if I read a paragraph and there's more than three sentences, I can't read it because that's too many words to try to process. And plus, I tend to un arrange words so like if I'm writing I might write one word over here that should go over there and one word over here that should go over there so I got all that going for me so I'm, I figure myself to be a, above exceptional with all the things I got going on for me well anyway as you know we've just had the recent drama of this engine and this is where the story is going I told you all that in precursor as a precursor to what I'm going to tell you now uh, I bought this engine from a guy off Marketplace, and he told me when I bought it, he said, man, that's a good engine. You could probably just put that thing back together and put a new cam in and drive it and be good. And then, of course, it started making that noise that y'all all heard that sounded like something was coming apart. So I decided, well, I'm just going to pull this apart because it's got these big old, uh, it's got these big old flat top pistons on here, and they're, they're, they'll run you some money. You know, the, the regular pistons are cupped out, and they don't have as much compression, but these aren't. No, I'm dripping oil. I'm dripping oil. Oh, well. So, anyway, I pulled these out, and I looked at this first one, and that right there is where the uh, insert should be. And either... Either there was an insert in there that wore slap out and didn't leave nothing but the brass, because this is this is brass. This is like aluminum coated brass here, and I would think if it was if I if I'd left that out completely, there wouldn't be nothing there. But since there's this brass stuff, I'm wondering now because this didn't spin. This part didn't spin. It was still in place. I'm wondering. Could I have left that out? Now, when I took this engine apart, I had all the stuff falling down in this bucket and in this box, you know, to catch it so that I wouldn't harm them pistons. I'm figuring on selling them pistons, right? Oh, look, look. I told you all that story for nothing. There it is. Okay, I'll take it back. <laughs> I was fixing to admit to forgetting to put that in there, and it is in there. It was in there. There it is right there. Okay. All right. So I was fixing to take credit for doing a bad thing. Because the guy that sold me this motor, he said, yeah, it's a good motor. You'll be good. And and I'm not blaming this on him. I, I did call. I wound up talking to his son. He wasn't real friendly about it, and I just decided not to mess with him. But I, I wasn't going to try to make him. You know, he, he was talking about, yeah, if you don't have for that, I'll give you money back. But anyway. There's that. So, okay, I take it back. I didn't actually leave that out. So what I am going to do, though, I'm going to run this thing in the paper as one set of flat top 60 over small block Chevy pistons for like $250 and throw the engine and the crank in for free. That's one way you could look at it, or you could just say one possibly rebuildable 60 over Chevy engine. I think these these are I think these are 10 over here. And what that means is they'll they'll turn these crankshafts and they'll put oversized bearings in here. And I think when I took these apart that these were 10 over. So okay all that stuff I told you about me sinning and doing wrong, I was fixing to confess to a sin I didn't actually do. So so thank goodness and thank the good Lord and because for my self esteem if I figured out that this was all my fault and it might have been my fault anyway. You know, um, that guy started talking about, well, did you did you do this? Did you do that? And he started talking about, you know, all the machine work and stuff. And, and I, I don't. I've built engines and not done machine work my whole life uh, with success. Oh, there was one more thing. Somebody said that noise could have been the flex plate. Well, you know what? Oh, I can't do it now because I, I don't have any pressure. But these... These weren't actually as tight as they should have been. In fact, look, it's finger tight right there. So, yeah, that noise could have also been the flex plate right there. 
peak. I don't know what I'm going to do with you. Sometimes I just don't know what I'm going to do with you. Doggone it. But anyway, that's for sale. Uh, 250. Motor, crank, pistons, rods, and yeah. And then maybe the next person will take it to the machine I should have done. Okay, I ain't going to talk about that anymore ever again. Uh, I promise. Y'all have a nice day. I, I would turn you off, but my fingers, my fingers are greasy now, so. Let me put this rag on here, and I'll push your button right there. Love y'all. I, I hope you're having a good day, and I uh, hope a good Lord's as good to y'all as he is to me and Cutworm and, and Rusty Acres. I heard a, I didn't actually talk to Rusty Acres this morning, but I talked to Luke Palioka, who talked to him, and he's still alive. I ain't heard from him a while, but he is. So y'all pray for him, too. I think he's got a broke air conditioner. If you live in Florida, you got a broke air conditioner, that's bad. That's real bad. So see y'all.